This is Town Square Sunday on 1420 WBSM, a place where people come together to talk about some of the good things happening in and around New Bedford, a place to share, a place on the radio for the people. Come together right now. Oh, and now, the moderator of Town Square Sunday, 1420 WBSM's Jim Phillips. Good morning and welcome to Town Square Sunday from the WBSM Morning Show. I'm Casey Sylvia filling in for Jim Phillips. Each week we highlight members of the South Coast community and organizations that make this part of the world a better place to live. Our first guest this weekend is the new commander of the Dartmouth VFW, Lacey St. Jean. Welcome, Lacey. Thank you. Now, not only are you the first female commander of the Dartmouth VFW, but you're taking over for your father, Jerry Marshall. Is that correct? Yes. What does it mean for you to be taking on this? role? It's an amazing experience. I'm so humbled by the fact that they have allowed me to do this. And filling in for my father's shoes is going to be a huge task, but I'm totally up to it. Now, is it like an election period that you kind of have to go through and campaign? Or is it kind of like they just kind of settle on, you know what, this is the person, there's no other person that could fit this role? So there was an election. I was unanimously voted in, which, again, was amazing. Um, And I was installed last night and held the first meeting. So, great. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. And so are you officially taking over the duties as commander as of last night? Yes. Perfect. So what would you say is the biggest challenge you face starting out? Um, I think the biggest challenge is just getting... Uh, new members in the door and having the members that we currently have participating in the meetings. So membership wise, um, we have about 93 members, which is great. I'd love to see the Vietnam veterans continue to come in. Uh, I think there's that uh, perception that they're, you know, they're unwelcome, kind of how they came home from the war. However, completely not true. We love having them there. They make up the biggest population for my era, um, I think there's that perception of, oh, it's a smoky hall with 60-year-old men in there. Completely untrue. We have community involvement, and if they're looking to make changes, they should come in the door because you can't make a change unless you try to make something change. So, so they have to facilitate that change themselves and you know, not put on that perception and continue it for the next generation Absolutely. of veterans. Absolutely. Um, will there be any changes once everything, you know, it's official as of, well, last night? Not any changes. The thing that we're trying to do right now is we're trying to build a pavilion in the back of the VFW. Um, right now, we just have like a small tent. The pavilion would provide a bigger space for the community, put some picnic tables out there, be able to have the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts join us. Um, community events, bigger ones, better ones. So that's kind of our focus right now. We're fundraising for the pavilion. So the community events that you're talking about, are these, you know, just veterans or are you kind of reaching out to the community as a whole? Oh, no, community. We're all about the community. So our veterans served our country, and now that they are in the Dartmouth VFW, they're looking to serve their community. Absolutely. And this is like an all-ages, all-area, not just Dartmouth? This is for everyone. Yep. Absolutely. Um, How important is it for a veteran to connect in a community like the VFW? I think it's very important. When you come home from overseas, you kind of just go through this lull where you don't really want to talk to anybody, be around anybody. But it's good to share your experiences, especially with other people that have, you know, lived the thing that you have lived, been overseas, had those challenges, faced that adversity. It's hard to talk to civilians, and I don't mean that in any kind of demeaning way, but it's a lot easier to speak to somebody who's also had the experiences that you had, and you get that in the VFW. You get those stories. They sit around, and they talk about it, and they joke about it, and it's just great. It's great for mental health. So you have that connection with somebody who's already in the same mindset, coming out of the same experiences as you. Is there any point in time where you feel like you just have to kind of get away and this is kind of like a VFW organization that you're not going to be able to find anywhere else, that you're only going to be able to talk to one or two people that have been through what you've been through? Um, You know what it reminds me of? The VFW reminds me of Cheers. You walk in, people know your name, they greet you, good conversation, just 
the ability to speak freely about the things that you've seen or witnessed or been through and in the person to look back at you and go, I understand. I just got that complete mental picture in my head. That yeah. Walk yeah. in the door, Norm! Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone screams at him. Everybody, what's the, everybody knows your name. Exactly. Absolutely. Um, so you mentioned the, the community events and you know how like this VFW is not the smoky bar. How would you define the Dartmouth VFW in your perspective? Um, so our last event, we actually had the local police department and the fire department come down and join us. Uh, they did fire safety. They talked about, you know, the smoke detectors in the house. We had the police there. They were doing fingerprints for the children. Um, so we're, we do. We try to involve them. The Boy Scouts, we try to get them there to do, like, flag-folding ceremonies. We try to get everyone involved. And as we progress and, and as I am the commander, I've actually put out a few different community outreach programs that I'm looking to kind of get into. Um, we're making that decision at the next meeting. Very nice. Um, how, how long have you been a member? I have been a member for 14 years. That is a long time. I assume oh, yeah. you forged some strong bonds in that, in that amount of time. What are some of the benefits that you've personally realized as a member of the VFW? So one of our members, Jim Collins, he's now our service officer. He used to be the service officer for Dartmouth. So he used to be the person that the vets could go to, show them all the benefits, where to go, the VA, the different things that were involved. He's there. So he's he's huge to us because anybody can walk in off the street and he has a ton of information for them. But realistically, they're like an extended family of mine now. Um, I've grown to know them and their families. It's... It's just an extension, and, and I love it. It's it's great. What would you say is the biggest project that you're working on right now outside of that pavilion, kind of more of the community outreach side of it? Um, the community outreach, like I said, we've been discussing it. We're looking for certain programs. So honestly, if there is a community outreach program that does need assistance, they need volunteers, I'd love for them to come forward. We only had a few that we were kind of juggling around, but if there's a specific one or somebody out there that does need help from the community, the VFW is you know more than able to help. You said so yourself. You have, what, 93 members right now? We That's do. 93 bodies to help out with those projects, definitely. So you yourself, do you have any events coming up? We do. We have the Commander Steak Barbecue, which, funny enough, is the, uh, the community welcoming me in as the new commander, um, and that'll be on July 15th. And how can people find tickets to that event? So they can come to the VFW and get tickets early, or they can purchase them the day of the event. And how much are tickets? They're only $15. Steak dinner for 15 bucks. Right. I'm in! Let's do it! Um, so... You have how many members? I know you said you have 93 members. Right. Um, how many members are from, uh, I would say, like the Iraq, post Iraq era? Right now, I believe we have only six of us. Is so that Vietnam, something? Yeah. Is that something you're kind of looking forward to expanding in the future? I am. I'm looking at getting our newer veterans in, getting our female veterans in. Huge perception and funny story. The first day that I ever went there, I went with my father, and it was Veterans Day. We walked up, and they said, you know, your father can come in. He's a veteran, but I'm sorry. It's for veterans only. And I kind of laughed was a little bit offended, but I then turned and said, I belong here. Here's my paperwork. Here's my DD-214. And it was a complete 180. They welcomed me in the door. You know, we had fun all day. So for the female veterans out there that have faced that adversity, be the change. Be the person that says, no, I belong here. Because 14 years later, I'm now the commander. So that tells you that they do accept us. You just need to be that person that says, I belong here. So how long would you say that it took? I mean, I know you said 14 years that you were there. How long before you kind of understood you could make other people realize that, yeah, you belong there, but other females as well, that you didn't want any other females to have that assumption on them saying they do not belong there? It only, right when I told them that I was actually a veteran, they were completely accepting of it. Um, 
And that's that's where that change took place right there was I could have walked away, turned around and said, yeah, you know, something like you just offended me. I'm leaving. But instead, I stood there and said, no, I belong here. And since then, they've welcomed me into everything, all of their events. I carry flags at their parades. I mean, it's the perceptions there, but you need to be the change. Did you say something that day about, you know, they shouldn't have that assumption that because you were a woman? That you shouldn't belong there? Um, I said it in not the most polite manner. I got my point across. I, I but think again, that it was deserved saying, you know what? Like, you can't assume that just because I'm a woman, I don't belong at a VFW. And I think that your father being there was probably made you more assertive and in, in forming your opinion and letting it be known. Um, but I'm glad that you did because I know that a lot of female vets – probably felt the same way you did, being like, just because I'm a female, they assume that I don't belong here. So I'm right. glad that you did. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Thank you. Um, where can people find you online for more information about the organization? So we do have a Facebook page. It is Dartmouth VFW Post 9059. Um, we've been up about six months with it. Can go on. They can see the events, what's going on, the different things that we have going on in the community and uh, share their experiences if they want. Would you say that Facebook is your only form of social media, or are you trying to branch out into other areas as well so that other people can reach out to you via Twitter or Instagram or maybe kind of promote your events that way as well? Yep. So social media, Facebook specifically, was the first one. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to start getting into the Twitter and the Instagram uh, and developing those pages. We just kind of – that was a test page, and it's doing well. So now as we go forward, we'll break into the other social media outlets. Well, thank you so much. And one more time about your event coming up. It is on July 15th at 1 o'clock, and it's at the Dartmouth VFW, which is – Where is that located? 144 Crossroad in Dartmouth, and the tickets are $15. Perfect. Thank you, Lacey, for speaking with us today. Best of luck to you and your new adventure. Congratulations. Stay tuned. Town Square Sunday will return in just a moment.